The final day of the regular season as Garrett Hartley approaches the football and the former New Orleans Saint picks it off down to the 10-yard line and that's where Ratliff Williams will go to work up the sideline with some room to the 40. Ratliff Williams to midfield and the turf got him at the 45. An outstanding return for Anthony Ratliff Williams, the former North Carolina Tar Heel. After the 45-yard kick return, first down to 10 at the 45. Perez off play action, short pass, and a good game. First down and more up the sidelines as the tight end to Quan Hampton, who's moving from wide receiver to tight end in the spring league, gets the first down. Second down and two from the 21. C.J. Opalaby, and Opalaby with a first down to the 13-yard line. Just a great drive here if you're Kevin Gilbride and company. You're getting your quarterback some comfortable completion. Third and nine, Perez steps up into the pocket, throwing to the back of the end zone, and it's too tall. He was looking for K.J. Stepherson, couldn't connect with him, and now the Jousters will attempt a field goal with a brand-new kicker. They've switched out both kicker and punter this week. They lost Colton Schmidt, who'd been doing a tremendous job, the former Buffalo Bill from the punting spot. Austin Jones comes in now as the kicker, his first attempt. And you know you're new when your name's not on the back of the jersey yet. <laughs> Hold is down, and the kick is right down the middle of the Jousters on the board off their opening possession. 10-32 remaining in the first. Jousters with the early 3-0 edge. Just leads the leading rusher. On the 38-yard line, Johnson to the air for the first time. That's a first down to midfield, a pickup of 12 on the pitch and catch to Cavante Turpin, 14th catch of the year for Turpin. And this Jousters defense, you talked about at the top of the program, this is why the Jousters are in a position to go to the Mega Bowl. This defense has been stout most of the season. And in the past, they really like his shot the next level. There's Galloway, patient runner, looks for the lane, finds a crease, and a good first down run. And step on second and eight. Johnson on the run. Big opening. Johnson with the wheels. Johnson down the sidelines and out of bounds at the 12. One, two. Third and eight. Johnson threw it behind the intended receiver, and that was fortunate for the Sea Lions that it wasn't picked off. Andrew Jamil was the man Johnson was trying to hit. Saints to the Super Bowl in 2010, hit three field goals in the Super Bowl, and Garrett Hartley bangs this one home. He's four for four in a Sea Lions uniform. Third down for the 42. They need 10 for the first. Perez going deep. Into sea line territory, wide open is Simmons, and he'll walk in for the touchdown. What a throw from Perez, and Simmons did the rest. His second touchdown catch of the year. A wise sail is accompanied by a post on the outside and just great execution. The safety is flat-footed. That time it was Tyson Graham, 44, beat. He's got to help out over the top for Darius Williams in stride a couple of missed long balls last week for Luis Perez off to a hot start three of five and a touchdown More effective than the run game today for the jousters on first and ten there's the pump looking down the sidelines well covered better thrown KJ Stefferson with the catch and a first down for the jousters that was an outstanding toss from Luis Perez it, huh, huh. Second and three. Off play action, did fight, and a sack for the Sea Lions. Try for Austin Jones. One for one today. Jones lines it up. He's now two for two today. And the Jousters with a 13 to three lead. Take this rush. There's the screen set up. And lots of room for Dewanya Tucker. And Tucker with a first down and tossed out of bounds. First time we've called the name of the Prairie View AM product. First down for all the defensive line. Third and eight. Holmes with a little bit of time down the sideline, sliding into the picture to make the catch at the 30-yard line is Andrew Jamil. And what a play by Jamil to get down low, make the grab, and establish himself in bounds with the ball before he slid out. Great spot here by Ben Holmes. The corner route from Jamil. See it. 
secures it on the knee. One knee equals two feet. So either a 49-yard field goal or fourth and nine. They opt for fourth and nine to go for it. Holmes with pressure in his face, floats it to the end zone, low throw. Did he make the catch at the two? Cameron Eccles Looper coming back to get it. He's saying he's got it at the two-yard line. And the officials agree. We'll see the look to find some time to even give him a chance. Eccles Looper has both hands underneath it, no doubt about it. First and goal. He had a free runner and a linebacker. Again, they're having problems with that protection. From the two, the direct snap to Galloway. And Galloway lunging for the end zone. He's in for the touchdown. Third and two. Joshua's have completed nine straight passes. Anderson with a pop, lost the ball and lost yardage. He was trying to get away from the pressure of Jeff McCullough. And McCullough created that fumble and the loss on the play for the Jousters. Two man game by these outside receivers. They have to hurry on fourth and three. Just gets the snap off. Holmes on the run down the sideline and complete. It was a little wobbly. Hey, down that sideline, and the Sea Lions turn it over on downs on their own side of midfield. The one and four Sea Lions go for it, but they're turned away late for a trip to the Mega Bowl. Sneak. And on third and one, it is that QB sneak from Drew Anderson, and he should have it up for the first down. That's going to be close right there. Anderson. Throw short, Hillman drops it. And the Jousters now have a decision. Do you go on fourth and six or do you try the long field goal? And it looks like the decision is made as Austin Jones jogs onto the field. Good snap, good hold, good kick for Austin Jones. Alonzo Vera, the long snapper. Drew Gallitz, the holder. Austin Jones, the kicker. That results in three. Field goal feels a lot like last week leaving this one score game. What happened last week was a Hail Mary for the Blues that won them the game. Here's Tommy Levine. Levine to the 20. As Levine lost the football recovered by the Jousters. The ball pops out and Shalom Luani was right there to recover. And the first giant break of the game goes the Jousters way. Wow. Is this, uh, I think it's Galloway, they end up sneaking in back there again. And just a great hat on hat shot, hat on ball shot. I think it's Colby Duncan, possibly that forces that fumble. And as you said, Luani, they're already in field goal range. So you're hammering your quarterback, ball security, your backs, ball security. And now you certainly want to punch this in if you're the, if you're the jousters and Kevin Gilbride for a touchdown, but a field goal makes this a two score game. Third and eight at the 28. Anderson under pressure. Gonna run. Anderson, a little stiff arm, gets the first down to the 18 yard. And then rush. Anderson on third and fourth throws short right to the marker. Donnie Ernsberger. It's gonna depend on where they spot this. Is he short of the first down or did he get enough? Man, they marked him short, and that sure looked like that was one of those ones where the ball was in the left hand. And they got movement up front, but was there movement on the right side of the offensive line from Darius Hicks that brought Jenkins over? At the distance to the goal, results in a first down. Wow. The officials say no. I guarantee you the entire conversation on that sideline was, hey, watch the ball. Watch the ball. Watch the ball. And now first and goal inside the five. Quick toss to the edge. Ratliff Williams, the stiff arm, and in for the touchdown. And will that be... Housters to the Mega Bowl. <laughs> Two-point try is good, and a 24-10 lead for the Jousters with 6.59 to go. So back him up with the penalty all the way back to the 20 yard line. Holmes will set down on first down and he throws over the middle and it's intercepted. Picked off of the... 
down to the 33 goes Shalom Luani, and the Jousters up two touchdowns get the turnover that may turn this one off for the Sea Lions. Oh, the flight of the ball. He's trying to shape this route with the throw. Not good. Cross and face there on the free safety, and he just airmails it. That's a ball drill right there for Shalom. Two turnovers in the last three touches for the Sea Lions. They had the check. And they talk about <laughs> stepping with the run, and they are. Opalaby and Opalaby down to the 24 yard line. That's short of the first down, and it'll bring up fourth and short. Two yards for the first for the Jousters. Good snap and hold once again. The mechanism good, the kick is good. And a 27 to 10 lead. For the Jousters, 4.07 remaining in the fourth. Jousters in control. Late stages of this one. Johnson, clean pocket to throw from, and that'll be a first down as he finds Turpin. Yeah, you said a clean pocket. That has not been the case the majority of the night for this front help out. Second down, and back does stay in. Johnson floats it out to the flat. It is caught and out of bounds with a first down into Jouster's territory. First to 10 from the 45. Johnson slings it, and it's intercepted off the deflection. Down the sidelines goes Brandon Bryce, and Bryce with a return all the way to the 21, and that'll salt it away for the Jousters with 147 to play in the fourth. Linemen are already there, champions of the North. Anderson takes the knee. He played the entire second half. Both quarterbacks for the Jousters, Mark, played an outstanding game today in leading the Jousters to this 27-10 win. No doubt Perez on fire in the first half. We talked about it, man. It's going to be tough for Coach Gilbride to take him out, 8 of 10. Anderson comes in 6 of 9 for 35 and one touchdown. Did some good things with his feet. It's a total team effort by the Jousters.